Welcome BBW News Headline UNLF Commit Isaac Lindsay Raring to get started. Analysis, why Corey Littleton is perfect fit for Las Vegas Raiders. March Madness betting memories, assessing futures and saying goodbye. Amori Hardy transferring from UNLF. Virtual Madness, 5 NCAA tournament games to stream while missing this year's action. Please subscribe my BBW News YouTube channel and click the bell button follow more next update news. BBW News Details. Unlove commit Isaac Lindsay Raring to get started. After what has been a long winter, Isaac Lindsay is excited to get back on the basketball court. It's going to happen. It's just that, due to a variety of factors, he's not exactly sure when. Lindsay, a 6'4 shooting guard from Mineral Point, Wisk. Committed to Unlof and June as the second player in the Rebels 2020 recruiting class. His passing ability and accurate outside shooting made him an intriguing addition despite his unranked status on most recruiting sites. Lindsay could have used the 2019-20 high school season to prove himself as a hot prospect. But instead he was limited to five games due to a lingering hip injury he suffered quarterbacking the Mineral Point football team. Lindsay played through the pain for a while but eventually opted for surgery, sacrificing his senior basketball campaign in order to get healthy in time for college. They told me I could have finished the rest of the season and then had the surgery, Lindsay said, but at that point I just wanted to get ready for Unlof so I decided to get it right away. I had a torn labrum and I had some overgrown bone on my hip, so I had surgery for that and to shave the bone down. Now I'm doing rehab and I feel like I'm 100%. I feel like I could be playing right now. Lindsay has been rehabbing with a local trainer and is currently cleared for stationary work such as ball handling drills and light shooting exercises. He's hoping to get the go-ahead to begin sprinting and jumping in the next two weeks. The other situation clouding Lindsay's hoops future is the coronavirus outbreak. His trainer's gym has been shuttered due to the pandemic, so Lindsay is mostly rehabbing at home. And with Wisconsin schools closed indefinitely, he is preparing to shift to online learning to complete the remaining weeks of his high school coursework. He still anticipates wrapping up high school on time. I think everything here is planned to graduate in normal time, Lindsay said. Everyone is just trying to figure out how that is going to happen. We have virtual learning and stuff like that, so I'm taking care of that and we should be able to finish on time. Lindsay is set to arrive at Unlof on June 4 for the summer semester and he said he hasn't heard anything different from the Rebels coaching staff. Unlof has moved all classes online but has not shut down its dormitories yet, a measure some universities have taken to combat the spread of the virus. If the Unlof summer semester begins on schedule, Lindsay expects to be there not at a prep school. With the Rebels facing a lot of roster turnover this offseason, there was some speculation as to how the team would make room for eight incoming scholarship players. As one of three true high school seniors in the class, Lindsay could have attended prep school for a year. That move would have served the dual purpose of temporarily freeing up a scholarship while also putting another year between Lindsay and his injury. But he said TJ Odd-Silberger has not brought up the idea of prepping for a year. No, that hasn't been a discussion at all for me, Lindsay said. I'm still planning on going to Unlof on June 4. There hasn't been any talk about prep school. I'm super excited to get out there. Between the injury, the pandemic, the rehab and the prep rumors, it's understandable that Lindsay just wants to get back on the court as soon as possible and focus on basketball. The play of the run in Rebels this season has also stoked his desire to join the program. I watched most of their games, Lindsay said. You can see how much better they got over the year, the defensive commitment they had. I know coach's game plan and how he likes to run stuff, and it was cool to see those guys develop over the year. I liked the way they moved the ball on offense. I really see myself fitting in there with my outside shooting and the way they move the ball. Analysis, why Corey Littleton is perfect fit for Las Vegas Raiders. This is a 2019 file photo showing Corey Littleton of the Los Angeles Rams NFL football team. 
The Las Vegas Raiders have agreed with free agent linebacker Corey Littleton on a three-year contract. A person familiar with the contract says the sides came to agreement on the deal to give the Raiders a major upgrade at linebacker. The person spoke on condition of anonymity, because the contract can't be signed until the start of the new league year on Wednesday, March 18, 2020. When the Raiders came to an agreement with free agent linebacker Corey Littleton on Tuesday, it ended months of speculation linking the former Rams star to Las Vegas. Just about everyone seemed to assume the Raiders would make a top offer for Littleton, and general manager Mike Mayock and coach John Gruden came through with a three-year, $36 million pack to lock him down. Why were the Raiders so keen on Littleton, to the point that the signing seemed like a foregone conclusion? It's because Littleton is the perfect fit at the perfect time for the Las Vegas defense. Last year, the Raiders were abysmal when it came to defending the middle of the field. The team's group of no-name linebackers allowed opposing tight ends and running backs to run wide open between the hash marks, racking up big yardage on high percentage passing plays. Littleton, 26, instantly gives the Raiders an athletic defender who can not only match up with those pass catchers at the second level, he can win those matchups. He played all over the field for the Rams last year and made 134 tackles, but his most impressive skill by far is his ability to cover the intermediate area of the field. Whether it's running backs, tight ends or wide receivers, Littleton is hardly ever at a disadvantage in the middle of the action. When it comes to running backs who present as pass-catching threats, no one in the league is more dangerous than Carolina Panthers All-Pro Christian McCaffrey. When the Rams played at Carolina in Week 1 last year, it was Littleton who was often tasked with picking up McCaffrey when he split out of the backfield. A sampling of Littleton in coverage against the league's premier pass-catching back. March Madness betting memories, assessing futures and saying goodbye. Michigan State guard Cassius Winston 5 reacts to scoring on Duke during the first half of an NCAA Men's East Regional Final College basketball game in Washington, Sunday March 31, 2019. Results too often trump process in sports betting. Futures betting on this year's NCAA tournament is one market where that factually can't be the case given the cancellation of the postseason. I'm going to take advantage of the unique situation to put all nine futures wagers I made this season under the microscope to try to discern where I found value and where I can improve in the future. The market is constantly evolving, so a successful sports better needs to be too. This will also be a way to officially bid adieu to college basketball season with one last what could have been. Gonzaga 24-1, placed December 10th with Circa Sports. I started my portfolio this year by buying low on one of the nation's finest programs, and it might have been my wisest wager. The Zags were as low as 6-1 to one around town after winning the West Coast Conference Tournament at the Orleans two weeks ago. Stock was down on Gonzaga when this bet was placed, after it was blown out in the battle for Atlantis Championship game against Michigan. But that was clearly a bad spot for the Bulldogs. It was their fourth game in six days as opposed to only the third for the Wolverines, which also traveled 2,000 fewer miles for the early season tournament. I remember thinking Gonzaga may not lose again the whole regular season and they almost didn't with the only setback of February road trip to Bayou. All the mid-major focus going into the tournament was on Dayton and San Diego State, but if a smaller school was going to make it to the Final Four, I think it would have been a familiar face. I think it would have been Gonzaga. Verdict. Strong bet. I'm disappointed this one didn't get to play out. Virginia 32-1, placed December 10th with Circa Sports. Another attempt to buy low on the same day, this one didn't go as smoothly. The Cavaliers had just lost by 29 points at Purdue to see their price raise in what I thought to be an unfair manner. It wasn't. This clearly wasn't a vintage Tony Bennett team as the defending national champions went on to lose five of their next eight games after I made this bet. They stretched above 100-1 to 1 before getting it together and winning eight straight to end the regular season. But there were still reasons for skepticism considering the Cavaliers win all but one of those games by three points or less. They looked like a strong candidate to fall to a no, 11 or no, 12 seed in a first-round upset loss. Verdict, slightly bad bet.
It wasn't that bad technically considering the market stood right around 32-1 to 1 at the end of the season, but Virginia didn't have enough talent to make a run this year. Louisville 10-1 placed December 12th with William Hill. This college basketball season had a particularly volatile first month with practically every contender suffering a puzzling loss. I bought into the parody narrative everyone was spreading, with one exception I thought Louisville was the best team in the nation. An off-shooting night and a loss to Texas Tech wasn't concerning to me. The 13-point defeat raised the Cardinals' futures price from 8 to 10 to 1, and I thought it would never be that high again. Again, I was wrong. This was a dangerous but flow team set to go into the tournament at as high as 30 to 1 price. Verdict, bad bet. I always preach to stave off recency bias in this space, and I fell victim to it here. I should have let the season play out a little more to see if Louisville was truly as efficient as I paid it to be. Ohio State 12 to 1, placed December 12th with stations. This was a rogue price I noticed while shopping around to find out which sports book most overreacted to Louisville's loss. Everywhere else in town was a 10 to 1 or less on the Buckeyes and I couldn't resist jumping on another team like Louisville that I thought was poised to hang around the top 5 of the polls all season. Instead, Ohio State never got back to the top 5 again after losing to Minnesota 84-71 in its next game. The Buckeyes are another team that would have been dangerous in the tournament, but not enough to justify this price. Verdict, bad bet. I got a little trigger happy early in the season, which is something I plan to guard against in the future. Michigan State 20-1, placed February 14th with stations. If there was a draft of teams to win the national championship right before everything was cancelled, Kansas would have been an obvious first overall pick. I would have taken Michigan State second. That may sound crazy given the Spartans' nine losses on the season. But they looked like the most well-rounded team in the nation and one that was rounding into shape late with five straight easy wins against tough competition. Michigan State's last loss of the season, 67-60 to Maryland, actually came a day after I placed this bet so it would have been better to hold off a couple days, but I don't regret it. Verdict, strong bet. It's close. But I think if I could only pick one future to hold on to, I'd take this one over Gonzaga. And that's without even considering I placed more money on this one. West Virginia 25-1, placed February 14th with stations. The Mountaineers lost four of their next five games after I made this bet, making them 1-6 in a three-week span. Oops. In my defense, West Virginia was an eye-catching team this year. The Mountaineers played hellacious defense, even for their standards, and were above average athletically. But that's not always enough. It's important to have some semblance of offense, and West Virginia had no semblance of offense. Verdict, bad bet. Beating Baylor 76-64 to end the regular season gave me a glimpse of hope, but higher prices would have been available if I held off a little longer. Arizona 30-1 placed February 28th with Westgate Las Vegas Superbook. Nico Mannion. Josh Green. Zeke Naji. The Wildcats had the talent to make a postseason run. It's too bad they didn't show any other indicators that one was imminent. Arizona lost two of its final three regular season games and got as high as 40 to 1 in futures markets around town. That definitively makes this a bad bet but I still think Arizona might have offered some value in the NCAA tournament. The Pac-12 conference was much improved and underrated this year, and Arizona was the team with the most upside in the league. Verdict, slightly bad bet. Given my soft spot for Arizona, this would flip if I had gotten 40 to 1 or higher. Houston 80 to 1, placed February 28th with Westgate Las Vegas Superbook. If a no, 7 or no, 8 seed was going to wreak havoc on the tournament this year, it was going to be Houston. I remain convinced of that fact. The Cougars had a terrific season despite being one of the unluckiest teams in the nation by Ken Pomeroy's numbers. They were long, lanky and would have created matchups for any team they met in the tournament. Verdict, decent bet. Houston is a Michigan buzzer beater in 2018 away from having made the Sweet 16 for two straight years and it would have had a great shot to make it again this season. 
I could have started considering playing off this price if the Cougars made it that far. Wisconsin 100 to 1, placed March 10th with Circa Sports. Count me among the Big Ten believers. All season, there was a debate on how strong the conference really was. I thought it was among the best leagues in the last decade of college basketball, so why not latch onto the Big Ten co-regular season champion at an astronomical price? Sure, Wisconsin was slightly lucky to earn the number one seed in the cancelled conference tournament, but it fit the profile of a team that could catch fire in the tournament. The Badgers were unsurprisingly well coached under Greg Gard and capable of lighting up the scoreboard with three-point shooting. Verdict, decent bet. Much like Houston, I had visions on potentially starting to hedge this price if the Badgers could get to the Elite Eight.